In this video, we're going to look at all you need to know about path layers for Azure Maps in Power BI. We're going to look at the basics of how to use path layers, how to customize it, and how to create your own paths. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's jump in. So Path Layers is an Azure Maps feature that was released as part of Power BI's November 2024 feature update, which basically gives users the ability to visualize connection between map points. This type of visual is useful for dashboards where you want to show routes such as flight or car routes, or how different locations are connected to each other. So how it works is essentially each point in the map is a location, either a location name or a coordinate using latitude and longitude, and then you use properties like path order to define the sequence of the line that is being drawn in between these data points, as well as path ID to differentiate between different paths. So here we are in my Power BI desktop just to show you how the paths work. I've already created a table here which is just a simple list of cities with a point ID which is just a label uh, for our one path here and a point order to define how these points will be connected to each other via paths. So to start with, we're gonna click the Azure Maps visual here that I've added. There's, it's empty because we haven't added anything here yet. But if we expand and put the city in the location, first of all, you will see that it gets uh, created a bubble layer here. And now if we add point ID on the path ID here, you will see that the line gets drawn from uh, New York to Los Angeles to Houston. And uh, point order already defines how that is, uh, how it will be drawn. So that's a pretty simple way to demonstrate how the path layers work. Let's look at another example. Here we are in page two, which has the same kind of structure, but with a lot more cities to play around with. You'll notice that we have multiple path IDs here, not just uh, one path ID, which means we can have multiple uh, paths or lines uh, in our map, and that will be defined by the path ID. The point order will define how they're drawn. So uh, let's visualize this right now. So let's click on the map here. Let's go to the, uh, the other table. Uh, same thing, we'll put the city in the location, which adds the points. The path ID will put in the path ID here and the point order in the point order uh, well here. And as you can see, it draws different lines because we have different path IDs here and how the lines are drawn is simply because of how we have the point order. Now the point order is not really that necessary here because we only have two points per line, but if you had more, it will just make sure that your lines are drawn correctly. So let's have a look at another example here. In this page three, we are using latitude and longitude values, which are the coordinates in a map, instead of a location. So this will give us a little bit more of an accurate point in a map, as opposed to cities or countries, for example. And we also have a date column here, which uh, is just one date after each other. And the reason for this is that you might not always have an index in terms of uh, numerical values, but you can use dates to chronologically create an order for your paths. So in this case, we can use this as our point order. So let's have a look at doing this. So let's click the, uh, the Azure Maps visual here and under our paths here, we'll put the latitude and longitude in our map here. So it will just give us some areas here in our map. And then on the ID, we'll put path ID. And then on the point order, we'll do uh, the date. So as you noticed before we added the dates in the point order, Azure Maps tried to decide what the actual path is for the, uh, the, the points that we have here in the map. So making sure that having this point order ensures that it draws the lines in between your points in the way that you expect it to. So something like this. There are a few customization options in the path layers for Azure Maps. So if we go to the uh, format pane here on the right hand side, and then you go to the path layer, you will see that you will be able to adjust things like the color, transparency, the width of it, making it bigger or smaller, 
or you can adjust how the zoom works um, when you have these paths in, uh, in, in your map. If you have multiple paths in your map, for example, you can also adjust these uh, settings individually for each of these paths. So you might want to have a, a, a path with a red if you want to highlight that, uh, maybe a little bit wider just to highlight it compared to the other paths. One feature that would have been really good with this is the ability to add some dynamic elements on these features, as, such as adjusting the colors and width based on uh, DAX properties. So that will allow us to kind of control it uh, as dynamically as we want from our data model. So at the moment, you're probably wondering to yourself, how do I create my own paths? Now, using the location versions here, which is just the cities, it's fairly easy to create your own paths, especially if it's worldwide. However, what if you wanted to create something more specific or something more accurate, something like this, where it points to specific geographical you know, locations in a map? So I've got you covered on that as well. So gjson.io is a website that I use to create things like polygons on a map. And I did cover this already in a separate video where I created my own polygon maps that is interactable in either Azure Maps or the Icon Maps custom visual, which is a really cool way to show maps in Power BI. So if you're interested in learning how to use this in that context, go check that out. But essentially what it does is it lets you draw things like um, lines or um, boxes and circles and uh, assign properties to those, uh, to those, uh, to those polygons. Uh, one thing that it can do for you is create a line string. So let's uh, try that. So let's uh, zoom in on this part of the map. So let's say, let's go to the UK and uh, let's try to draw a path string. So from London, maybe to Milton Keynes, and then perhaps to, let's say Oxford, and then Swindon. And if I hit enter here, on the right hand side, you'll notice that it generates a JSON uh, script here with a list of coordinates of the line string that we've created. So each point that we've created here is a coordinate here in this array. and Basically, this is what we can use to import this line or, or this path that we've created from this website into Power BI. So let's try to do that now. So let's hit save, save it as GeoJSON. We'll just call it map for now. And we're going to go back to our Power BI report here, get data, hit more, and then under JSON, we'll just hit all files so we can find that map. And if you hit open, here we go. So we have the latitude and longitude values here that we can use. Uh, the only thing that I would add here is an index because we don't have an ordering. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point, it's just for demonstration purposes. But if we add an index here like this, that can be our order. So we'll take one like this and then our coordinates and we hit close and load. So what we'll do is we'll put the new Azure Maps in this new page. We'll bring in the latitude and longitude in their respective field wells. If it's not pointing in the right place, it's probably because I have it the other way around. So I'll just put this one here. As you can see now it's pointing to the UK. And you can see there are the points that we did earlier from GeoJSON simply add the index on the point order. Uh, actually, we can't do that unless we put the path ID and then the index in the point order. So there you go. So you can create your own paths using the GeoJSON website. And that's really it for the path layers for Azure Maps. It's a fairly new feature and it's probably going to get more updates in the future. So if you want to stay up to date with all of the new features that comes out or any updates for the path layers, I'll leave a link to the official blog post in the description box below so you can read up about all the nuances about it as well as any new updates that might come. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so that we do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. 
If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.